two, one. Yo, it's FNF Live, the podcast. Excited that you guys are finally connected with me here. It has been a long time coming. And uh, beyond the audio, now we're giving you visuals. And today, I just wanted to start this out different uh, with someone I respect, not just as an artist, but as a person, as a husband, as a father. And uh, I got my friend Bonsky on here right now. What's going on, Bonsky? How you doing, my amigo? What's going on, bro? Long time coming, man. And I thank God for this opportunity, bro. Wow. Yo, man, the honor is all mine. I am extremely excited. I, I thought that one day we would eventually do interviews on some kind of radio station. But you know what? God set it up for us to do it here. And I am cool with that because the world can check out YouTube. You get on Spotify. Go check out your music streamed on Spotify. Also, or all these digital platforms. But we'll talk about your music in a minute. I want people to know more about who you are. You're an artist from Palm Bay. Palm Bay, right? That's what it's yep. called over there. It's not, it's not West Palm Beach. It's Palm no. Bay, correct? Yeah, they confuse it, man. But it's Palm Bay, Florida. Yeah. I and uh, you're Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican and Nicaragüense. Oh, okay. Well, and, and now part. Jamaican, because my mom, my mom just got married to a Jamaican. Oh, okay. So you got a mix of situations going on, and uh, that might tell why your new album is all all over the place. And I'll I'll get to why I think it's really unique and really different uh, compared to what a lot of other people are doing. But so I want to know a little bit about your journey. I know a lot of people ask this, but so give me the short version of how you got into this music thing. Maybe some trials you went through and where you're at presently right now, especially when it comes to your music. And for those that are not or never heard of him. Bonsky is the name that I said. That is his artistic name. Uh, and uh, I'm excited, man, to people to get to know who you are, because that's what this is about. FNF Live is not literally about putting on all the big dudes that everybody knows on CHH. We do that, but that's cool. But it's also about putting the dudes that are new, up and coming, that you've never heard of, that maybe you need to go and check up on Spotify, get them a couple thousand more streams, get them going right. Uh, so, yo, Bonsky, dime un poquito. How it started this journey of music because you not only uh, do music but I also think that you record you you got a little you you've learned along the way and you also do some video work too which is really cool because and, and artists if you're out there listening pay attention don't just do one thing be a you know be multiple facet because sometimes you can save yourself a lot of money let me not go all over the place the journey man how it started for you with this music thing there's a lot to unpack what you said but nonetheless man what got me here being blessed on fnf live bro uh born in san francisco left when i was seven um always looked up to my uncle uh he, he was the nigga i went to side from my mother's side he was always into uh, rastafarianism uh mm -hmm. went to the war uh came back so i always looked up to him because he drew he played music and because of my family telling me that i encompassed it uh naturally i feel like god has blessed me with the gift of uh you know playing percussion to to going later on in the years uh beat producing on a playstation mc music music generator oh, wow yeah okay. and then um uh and then from from a playstation to my boy eddie anthony putting me onto fl studio and wait you were producing that. beats on playstation what do you mean on a playstation yeah how, like, how does that work i'm sorry to cut you up but i've never heard that before how exactly uh, well it's something like it's like el mine used to do it like it's the same thing basically it's like uh it's a disc it okay. had presets and then what you do is you can take the disc out put in like yandy's favorite hits or whatever sample you know at a certain rate and oh, then you wow. can put that data back into the um software and it record whatever you did. And then that's how you start making your little intricacies Yo, in the music. So I, I, from an early jump in 99, I was able to, to like really go in depth and not be so like laid back on the way things should be in a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. So it opened up so much. So from there, um, I was able to grow. I wanted to sing. I didn't I wanted to rap. And back then you couldn't do both. Um, yeah. And I find myself today, bro, like through all the trials and tribulations that I've been through by the grace of God, bro, I'm here and I'm just like super thankful. I got put onto um, Obed, uh, Obed's label, God's Crew Records, that later changed on to Creation Enterprise. Shout out I to know. Obed, the architect, though. I know. Yeah, that. man. Shout out to my boy Obed, man. He just yeah. put me on to so much in 10 years, bro. We learned so much. Uh, we felt it was a perfect opportunity to just like, you know, break away uh, because we see that the label and the artists are like kind of almost one in one now days and that's what was going into what you were saying about you know artists learning different things so we decide to like keep each other supported you know what i'm saying and just uh keep each other motivated through all the stuff that we do we still got stuff we got going on in the future yeah. 
Um, so because of that, I, it's been a year uh, when, when we broke out, the pandemic came, wiped it all out. And um, we were just sitting ducks, you know? So that was the perfect opportunity for me to be like, yo, every single three months, I'm dropping an EP. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if it's singles or whatever. I would just drop wow. what's in my heart, you know? And growing up, bro, I had so many friends. I had so many types of friends. And um, because of that, I was going off of what I was yearning for, which is uh, people, you know, like, like being able to hug friends, being able to hug my boys, because I'm a man that loves, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and because of that, since I couldn't reach them, I decided to channel through them, through the power yeah. of the Holy Spirit in the EPs, in the musicalities. I would bring them over and say, yo, you're that type of person to me since we've been growing up to do this, that, and the third. I want to hear it on this track. I want to hear it on that track with that different person, you know? So uh, all in all, it brought me to here, bro, to the... Uh, um, my first EP uh, this year was Mindset EP. Where's okay. your mindset at? And, and, and that's just a, a concept of me going through uh, on a drive through at night, um, just on a drive at night and saying to myself, yo, everything that's going on is crazy. Track one, track two, track three, track four, track five, and track six was an entire trip. And th eventually the visuals will come out because I have to be in front of the camera at the same time being behind the camera. Uh, after that EP came out, I decided to make the next EP, Summer's Coming, hit up my boy A. Lewis. I know you got the, the, the features you wanted to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had to hold it for next year, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we held it, we held it. And next thing you know, a tap came out, uh, out of nowhere. A tap just came to me because it's, all, it's for me, I, I want to be all things to all people. You yeah. know, so that I may win some, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's in that's in Corinthians um, 1019. And, and it's it's something that I definitely like hold on strong to because of the variety of people that I have, the amount of people that I love and loving is hard. But I choose to love, man, and to just bring all types of people around, you know, for the glory. Yo, that's one thing I did notice uh, from hearing some of your music and doing a little research on you. The fact that uh, there's a lot of people. Yeah, you're highly, and I, I think this is big, man. A lot of people, this is like a, an, an underthought that a lot of people, especially artists or people with a platform, don't really look at or don't pay attention, is that when you're growing in your music or whatever art it is that you're doing, you're bringing other people up. And so I noticed that because there's a video I saw where you did a live, and I think you brought them some friends, people that have been following you for many years, and yeah. it looks like, uh, I think his wife, Luna, is on yeah, some yeah. of your tracks, especially Pro Templo, that yeah, I heard. Because yeah. I was like, who is this female on Atapa, yeah, yeah. your new album? And she's all over the place. But then I noticed yeah, genuinely when I saw her speak and her husband, how they spoke so high of you, it told me like, "I right, man, this dude is not just caught up on making music, but bringing others up. And sometimes I'll tell you this, and I think this is why this is really powerful. It's so underrated, yeah. especially when it comes to arts, is that people forget that sometimes it could be that one spark for you giving that person a chance to sing on a hook that eventually could grow them into doing music full time or doing worship at church. And I tell people all the time, man, there's God has given me the opportunity to do this for a long time. I've been away for two years, but the 15 years I was in, there was people that God brung around me and I wasn't doing anything. I was just doing what I love. They would come around and say, how can we help? And I didn't know I was just putting a seed. I wasn't doing nothing deep or talking to them in their soul and praying for them. I was literally saying, yo, if you want to help, ben ayuda and whatever God wants, if this is for a season and eventually you move on to something else. But now those people are either doing something in music and some aren't even doing anything in music. They're doing something creatively, but you were just a part of figuring out what that looked like. And God will use people like that. Like I've noticed that all the time. So when I saw that with you, uh, especially with Luna and her husband, it was authentic, man. Like I heard them talking and I, I felt like regardless if the music was involved, they were going to support you. And they said it a couple of times. They're like, man, we just support your vision and what you do. And so artists get caught up, man. Sometimes when you're just doing music, you're like in this whole box and you're like, oh, forget it. I don't need nobody. It's just Jesus yeah. me and we're just yeah. going to make it happen. And sadly, man, what happens, time, you get burned right, out yeah. or you get salty and then eventually you start yeah. blaming Jesus or things that yeah. he has nothing to do with. It was just you weren't given an opportunity to others to either jump on the platform and learn or grow or help them figure out how to cultivate what it is the, they're called to do or what they're supposed to be doing. So I respect that a lot, man. I watched that and it wasn't just her. Uh, I can name some others, but 
to me, they stood out. And you could tell from when someone yeah. speaks their body language. And when you got their husband coming in and being like, yeah, man, I vouch. And my wife is here to support you, whatever. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yo, that that's and that says a lot. And the fact you're doing so much music uh, just continues to say uh, how driven you are and what God continues to give you as a vision. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, what do you think your main influences are? When I first heard you, uh, I had a combination of things going on and I thought one thing, but then I heard more of you and then I was like, all right, cool. First I was like beat nuts and like NY hip hop. But then I was like, wait up, son. It switches up a little more as oh. you go on. Uh, Cause you're not like a one trick pony, which I think is exciting. And it'll just continue. Oh, the more uncomfortable man. you are in the music, the better it'll get as you go further down. Because if you stay really comfortable, then eventually you'll be doing the same thing 10 years from now. People will be like, yo, I said, they get it. we already know exactly what he's going to give us. And we'll talk about yeah. I thought about your new album because it brings out uh, some stuff. I was like, what, up? what is this? I, I didn't even know he did this, but it was cool. And it might even feel weird to some people because they've never heard it or have heard it a different way. But right. so who would you compare some of your, let's say, top three influences? Then? They don't got to be CHH because I want you to be yeah. honest who your influences are. If you had to pick three, uh, it could, maybe it's more, but give me three of the top three ones that you think have influenced yeah. the way you make music. Yeah, bro. Listen, you are low key like a Nardwar because you hit like when you said beat nuts, I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> you look at the artist, and I appreciate you, and I love you for that, bro. Wow. Um, so the top three definitely will have to be um, Pharrell number one, okay, uh, Timberland number two, all right, and Robert Glasper number three. Okay, and that's okay, tough okay. to put three in because I have like a top ten, and we'd have to spend time thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but if I wanted to do that, I'd do that because I never forget what Big Pun said on, on one of his tracks. He's like, what you want to do? You want to go commercial? You want to go underground? I can do all that. What you want to do? You know, like when he did that, bro, it stuck to me, bro. Like this yeah. Puerto Rican was like, I'll do it all. Whatever it takes. That's amazing. Hey, so new album, I thought about which all means all things to all people. Uh, is a variety, and I'll tell you, it's como dicen por allá, un arroz con habichuela y pollo, because there's a lot going on, and at first I was like, this is crazy. But then as I kept listening more and more, I was like, man, this is this is great to see someone who is uh, trying stuff without fear and saying, I want to try yeah. this. So, like, Pro Templo, it's a combination of stuff going on. First it sounds like a cumbia, and then it transitions into yeah. something a little different. Uh, and then there's that, that Favela song, which is a Brazilian sound that I was like, yo, this is crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I enjoyed it because a lot of people are scared to try stuff like that. Yeah. But if you had to give me a, a quick breakdown of what this Atapa album consists of, what some of the influences, where, where you felt driven or the vision behind it, I'd love to hear that. Because I, I yeah. guess when people get to hear this, we had to keep it short, is that there's a fusion of a lot going on. I can't say that Bonsky's album is one thing. It's not just Neil yeah. Soar and he's just doing uh, NYC backpack. And I, I want to say something real fast. No shade at all. No, no. I don't know who was doing the judging at the Flavor Fest 16 bar thing. Somebody sleeping because I saw who the finals <laughs> were and y'all missed the mark. Could y'all oh, put regardless like, three of the same good. different guys on there? I'm just saying, why? It's I don't okay. It's another, it's okay. I, there, there was a rig, but we'll talk about it another day. Cause I, you know what? Before I say a comment like that, bro, I listened to a lot of it. I hear you. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I see why this dude has got general. But then I was like, but this dude sounds just like this one. Why not bring somebody yeah, totally? Yeah. Yeah. It's it, here or there. I love Tommy. I love his church. I love everybody in, in of course. Uh, at Tampa. At, and maybe, you know, they had reasons. I, I don't know. but It is what it is. Man. I really enjoyed your submission. Just wanted to tell you that. My, I'm sorry. Yeah, Back no, to... You're good. That was a great one. And if you can grab it and throw it on something and release it, I think people would enjoy it also. Because uh, so, you, you did that side and wipe. Ugh, I'm about to kill you with this and put y'all boys back and show you I'm not just a one-trick pony. But listen. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, you <laughs> know me, give me the vision, man, behind the album, a little bit of the influence, the vision behind it how God sort of put it together and, and what you released. Okay. So one of the things I remembered um, recently was T-Pain yelling into a microphone saying, we want something different. We want something. We got, we already got the I little guy. We already got it. And I was like, 
oh man, I totally get it, you know? And uh, that, that pushed me because I already had the music ready to go. I was in fear, but I had to do what my heart wanted to do. Um, I listened to the music I portray. So you'll get, you'll see like a little Ferelli in there. You'll, you'll hear like a little bit of lyrical miracle in there from like a Royce the Five Nine or, yeah. or whatever it may be. But what I wanted to do, what I wanted to concentrate on was to be all things to all people so yeah. that I may win some, right? And what happened was uh, the culture spoke for itself. People were like, yo, this is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's because of so many, I have files and gigs and gigs of me just recording random sounds that I've been traveling uh, going on cruises with my wife and I pick something up and I'm like, this is nice. And then I go home, study it. And then I'm all, all of a sudden to the Brazilian rumba, the way yeah. they kind of just like, you know, do certain things with the rhythms and patterns that are opposite of what we're commonly used to, especially here. Yeah. Uh, so I have a rule, one, five, 10 rule. Who are you, who are you getting, um, who are you influencing or getting influenced by in your one mile radius? Those are your friends, those are your family and um, probably some strangers. So from one to five, you're already entering that stranger route. And when you're leading, um, that kind of becomes receptive for you because of what you're portraying as an artist. 10 mile radius from there, you're, you're bringing a buzz and, 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 it, and it just shoots out from there. So I'm intentional about what I want to do at home first, because what I do at home, everyone gets a taste of. My boy Earl, that from the interviews that I had, Luna, these people really stood out to me because what they do is they bring themselves into the house. And when they say, yo, there's something about this house that's at peace. I feel like I could be here forever. Yeah. That is what I want to bring, bring into the studio and enhance. Like they've been so, like you could tell, you like, he could tell you he was so transformed because he's never done something like that. But I saw what was in him, just like how you saw certain people in, in, in what you were doing. I saw something in him just flourish. So whatever happened after that is, is, is going to be with him. If he ever wants to come back and record, of course, we're going to do it. But yeah. because of that, the album encompasses so many things because of all this time, bro, I've been like, why don't I just do what I've been doing internally and sharing and get out of my shell and get in front of a camera and talk to them directly. So yeah. when I give them who I am and what I want to show as far as musicality is concerned and not be worried about how come, you know, I was on listening to the challenge and everyone was waiting for the beat to come in. Let me be the one that goes before the beat. Yeah. Let me be the one that does triple and double entendres. Let me be the one that does the and not care if it slips up in the beginning i just yeah. want to start getting out there and and making mistakes in the realm of being a lyricist an artist because everyone wants to everyone wants to see perfection and my album wasn't perfect i was over by some odd lufs and it and and the compression naturally brought it down from the rest of the tracks i was livid bro so i said you know what let me just put it on YouTube, the uncompressed version, so y'all could hear mm. the intentionality about being a professional when it comes to mixing and mastering. And shout out to my boy Nala Days because we go back and forth and we're sitting here like, bro, I got to get this mix right. I got to get that right because the people, I want to give the people, and first and foremost, I want to give God everything that he's giving me back to him full force. This is That's everything true. I have. Uh, you know, I can't do this on my own. You know, so with that, I need people in every aspect. And that encompasses the Atap album because those little snippets that you hear, those are moments in time that I'll never forget that my whole family was inside on Christmas and mm -hmm. we were just on the mic, just vacilando. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Wow. And, and that, bro, that that brings someone home when they're alone. That can bring someone home if they put if they put it in their in their earbuds. And they're, and they're just trying to find comfort in some kind of, you know, music that'll bring them to where God is. You know, so that that's what basically a tap is doing, bro, is bringing all things. I love that, man. I love the fact that you uh, chose. It seems like it was a team effort, not one person uh, only. And you made it. You were intentional about the fact of saying, I got to get all these people involved. They have to experience this with me so yeah, others yeah. can understand what we were going through in that moment, which I think is uh, really special. You are big help, listen. bro. You are gigantic help. Like you, you don't even know it, but I can tell you where inside of me, the, th the times you've told me in the DMs, you, you've told me to just, yo, do this. Everyone else is doing that. Do this. Challenge yourself and do it. I'm watching. You didn't say I'm watching, but you were like basically <laughs> saying I'm watching, you know? And, and I, think, I think I feel like there's something special 
uh, when you are fearless, especially when you're creative. Uh, and sadly, what happens is people get caught up, especially when they're starting out, they get caught up on like, I got to do what everybody else is doing. So that way my numbers look decent and I could possibly get picked up yeah. or whatever that entails. But to see, to try stuff fearfully and be like, I'm going to go out of the box, even if it's in small things that others may seem like whatever, but for me are huge. You, you can only get better as an artist or be great or get better at the craft it is that you're trying to master or get yeah. better at. So like, I feel, I feel like there's something genuine in it. And even now, like even as I talk to you and we're doing this interview, my brain is analyzing, how is this different from what I've done 15 years ago? How can I make it efficient? How can the listener benefit from it? How can it have value as we're talking and it's not just rambling? Uh, but that's why I think as, as you continue to just be uncomfortable, uh, growth comes out of that. I've always learned that. Although sometimes it's ugly as heck and not great to see. Uh, but even in some jobs, I remember when I worked at Engine in Houston, like my first two months, I was learning on the job. And I, people would thought it was the best thing in the world, but I was learning as I was going. Not that I didn't know what I was doing, but there was some some trends, some things I had to learn to get up to speed with. And that can happen with anybody. So especially with your music and the album, it's exciting to see that. Because I feel like when you do something like that and you bring people on that journey, it also breaks. Because I saw like, I bring this back because I, I saw these details in the conversations you guys had when you were yeah, talking yeah. to Luna and her husband, who uh, Luna was featured on the album a couple of times. Yeah, uh, there yeah, was something yeah. you mentioned, yeah. like you need to stop being scared of talking or, or being upfront about, you know, your talent or whatever, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. a snippet that I saw, but I was like, yo, that means Bro. that he's pushing that out and trying to get her to be more open because it's you terrible. see what God has said, yo, that, that she has, she has something special that she just needs to cultivate. And so if I got to push it, God needs us sometimes to bring people around us that do that. So, like, I think that's special. Those are small things that if you really are about that life and not just about you, you notice and you're like, yo, that dude actually cares more about that person than just what they bring. And I'll, I'll be the first yeah, one yeah. Yeah. to tell you from experience, I was the worst guy when it came to that. I would use people, abuse them, and then get yeah. what I needed, boom, move on to the next person. And then at some point, man, you start burning relationships. Uh, you're not genuinely doing a godly thing by just, you know, abusing people. And so I, it's exciting to see that you're doing that. And I hope and pray, man, that you continue to do that. You continue to use that because you don't know who needs it. You don't know right. who just needs one verse or five, ten, an hour at your studio to cultivate something that's been sitting there dead. You know how I got back? This is funny. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make it about me. No, bro. The reason why I came back after two years of being away from radio, point blank, period. Um, and other people don't know this. I had a successful business and I was like, I was like, God, transition it out. I want to go back to what I love doing, which is this. Um, man, it took, I did like, I was sitting in a parking lot waiting for my son, okay, to be picked up. Nobody knows this. I'm saying this to you now. You know, the line you sit at before you pick yeah. up your kids. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like on TikTok, bro. And I'm like, I should be more active on there. And then I happened to come through a voiceover challenge, literally. And I was like, oh, snap, these people aren't really that good. I think I could kill one of these. <laughs> yeah, literally bro. sitting in my car. And, you know, you got a duet and no sé qué and get a microphone and this and that. And I and I everything know. just worked out. Man, I did one. I killed it in like 10 seconds. People don't know. Like, I did it really fast. Just blew it up. And I uploaded it. And I said, man, I'm afraid, but. You know what? This is uncomfortable. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put myself out there. Ooh. No one's heard of me. They're going to probably think I'm cloud chasing, Ooh. which I'm not. I, I just really enjoy radio. And so I did one. That thing went crazy. Like, all these people yeah. were, I mean, I didn't go viral, but people enjoyed it. They're like, Yo, why don't you? So it, I've done a couple now since then because people keep asking for it. But that little small thing cultivated to be like, I was like, God, am I supposed to come back? I really. And it's not about the hype. It's really about knowing about people's lives. And if Listen, you people can get something out of what me and you were talking about and use it for their life or whatever yes. it is you're doing. And I'm talking about everything, not just artistry, but I'm talking about life as a father, son, whatever. I, I think that that's the value we bring. Here. That's why I'm be, excited about this. Be aware of what you ask God. Because th that little thing right there that you said was your answer because everyone was telling you yo this is what we need this this is dope this is fire and i and i'm all caps keep going because bro <laughs> yeah. that you're it was so receptive and i know you noticed it yeah i did i did it did it caught me off guard 
Because, you know, I haven't done anything in two years. I've been away from this. I mean, I've done my dad podcast, but that's something intimate that I'm really proud of. And it's it's a passion project. It's not dad's something I'm trying to get numbers on. But this this is, I re- man, when I, when I said, I'm going to hit this guy, we're going to do our first interview. We don't understand the fire that's been brewing in my belly. Like, okay, now, now, bro, this is what you're supposed to be doing. My mom has prayed. I mean, I, man, I'm telling you, my old girl cries, prays, and is like, I don't know what you're doing with your life. This is where you need to be. This is what you're good at. I don't know why you keep stepping and doing all this other trash. Like, do this. This is what God has said for you to do. And I'm like, Mom, stop. Nobody want to hear that. But uh, I'm excited, man. And I'm glad that it's someone like you because if we can start this off on the notion of it's not strictly just about me, my music, my single. But, yo, who who do I have around me that I'm cultivating and I'm trying to help get to that next level or to just identify what it is God wants to do in their life. And One my friend, that is, that is vital, okay? I've met hundreds of artists, okay? I've met hundreds. I don't know thousands, but hundreds. And yeah. very few have that as a trait. Uh, and if they do, it takes them forever. Yeah. Or their platform has to be so big for them to all of a sudden feel like they're a teacher and a mentor. But if you can start at the, at the lower level, and then yeah. grow that up. I, I feel like God honors that tremendously. So hey, I want people to know about the album, man. How do they go check you out? Because we can talk all day long. We're already at 30 minutes or at 25, but I want to cut this short already. I want Woo! people to go check out the yeah. <laughs> I want people to go check out your music, man. Uh it's gonna be on Spotify. So you can go check it on there. Bonsky. Uh yeah. I, I I mean he has a bunch of different records, there's stuff all over the place. We're going to talk about Pro Templo and then we're out of here. Give me the influence behind Pro Templo uh, so people know about this record. Man. Yo, Pro Templo was, you know, growing up Pentecostal. And I know you know about this. When this time see you, you know, when that time raising funds, you got Mama <laughs> Fulana de Tal in the back. You know, she got the heavy arms. So, you know, she cooks right. Yeah. So, she got the Pro Templo on the back. And I was like, yo, what if we did, like, if our body is the temple of the living God, right? Uh huh. While we do a Pro Templo, but with a track, because we always feeding ourselves, you know what I'm saying? For uh-huh. all the going to gluttony, why don't we just go? Because I got to wash my gut, my man. Hey. So I was like, let's Ooh. just, instead of going Pro Templo with, you know, the food, let's go Pro Templo with the word. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? <laughs> With, with music. So I told Luna, I was, I was going back and forth with my wife. I was like, yo, what? I need a girl on this verse. I don't need to do. I hear a girl on this verse. All of a sudden, Luna, she's in Jersey. Yeah. She flew down because the prices are low. We accommodated everything, bro. We got it all organized. And she was it. She's been out for a long time. And I told her, no, you are a gem. You've been with me since mixtape days. And yeah. I got to roll with you because you've always been supportive. We knocked this thing out, bro. And one whole day, I just had to record it all day. We went to Kiki's for, 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 for breakfast. Then we rested. We came back, went at it, went at it, went at it. And birthed uh, Pro Templo, bro. And it was just, it's just amazing because I, I got to give a shout out to Gabi because he, he started the cumbia, the trap chata. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. I heard that. I heard that influence in the beginning. Yeah, I had to. It's, I had it's, to. it's really unique, man. It's not. I enjoy the record because it's. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Even your rhyme scheme, yeah. you switch it up a couple of times, which is exciting to me. You can keep it the same way the whole way. Um, yeah. But Pro Templo is dope. How do people check you out on Spotify, your website? IGs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely, bro. I got to give honor where honor is due. So if I hear something that I like, I'm going to emulate it. You know, I think emulation is like the compliment. What is that? Is yes, that the, what they say? Yeah, compl- a compliment. Yeah. A form of compliment. Mm-hmm. Um, but y'all can find me anywhere. Bonsky on uh, YouTube, preferably. I'm trying to grow YouTube. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Bonsky, B-O-A-N-N-S-K-I. Uh, and and I uploaded everything on uh, Distro Kids, so it's doing its thing as I learn. Yo, new video drops when? Pro Templo drops tomorrow. When? Pro Templo tomorrow video drops is gonna tomorrow. drop. So by the time they hear this, it'll be Friday. Yeah, it'll actually yeah, drop. Yeah, yeah, it's already out. So please Perfect. run that up. Go and, uh, it, it's hard being a cameraman behind and in front at the same time, bro. And I just pray to get those funds to where I can like really emphasize on what I want to do since I do videos for other artists. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's, it's crazy, man. But, you know, we these are the humble beginnings and people like you that I have by my side that I know I can pray with and, or in any, anything with and just just get knowledge off of you, you off of me, whatever. It makes it possible for a tap to be what it is today, because the next tap is, is going to be something even greater, man. And I'm just going to allow God to do his will. Yo, go check out Bonsky all over social media. Uh, and uh, again, man, I just want to say. 
that hidden trait that many people don't see is more valuable than you will ever understand. And it'll help longevity wise. So even with some of these issues you may speak of, I'm going through it too. I'm praying God, I need the right kind of people around me. So some of this yeah. work is easier and I'm believing yeah. he'll do that for you. Like he'll do it for me. So, yo, I got your back, man. I appreciate you. Here's Pro Templo on FNF Live, the podcast.